Uh, I'll just say this about the, the move to enterprise and about the amount of features we're adding. Uh, someone mentioned that it sounds, wait, all these things are associated with ubiquity, you know, 24 hour support, pre-sales consultation, dedicated account rep. That sounds pretty crazy. And I, I hope it sounds familiar because it's the feedback from people in this room, from the people that are attending this call that have told us over and over again of the reasons that they wouldn't go with Unify on a deployment. And we hear that, we listen, and that's really, a, I mean, Tom spoke about how important the user experience is to us at Ubiquity. That's our approach to pricing. That's our approach to the, the way that the products are packaged together. And so that's still a consideration here. So we listen to what you have to say. We really do care. And so thank you for sharing your feedback and shaping the, the future of, of Unify. And so that strategy, I would say, is, is something that I think everyone here shares some responsibility for because you've helped weigh in on that. So please keep doing that. Tell us if there's problems or things that you still need. And I'll say that about enterprise, like you talked about, like these features that are rolling out. Yeah, we're going to keep coming out with new features. And, you know, Craig mentioned in his presentation that this is all license free. So even if you purchased our product five years ago, we just released like dynamic routing protocols this year as part of our push to get parity with more uh, routers in the market on our platform. And that's available now for anybody who bought, a, who bought a gateway device three years ago. You know, they still have that feature and it's not behind a special paywall that for this premium security uh, license, you can then access it. You get it, for, you get it for free after you purchase that product years ago. And so I think it's particularly noteworthy. We talked about Wi-Fi 7. So you're paying $179 for a Wi-Fi 7 AP. And it also gives you access for all the future development for Wi-Fi 7 that's going to come. So what, a, what better way to future proof than with a low cost product like that? and at little to no uh, cost for you. So you can future-proof without having to p break the bank, which I think is welcome in this industry when we've sold people on these upgrades. And at the end of the day, they say, Wi-Fi still Wi-Fi, you know? So that's, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's great. Um, so question, I mean, you mentioned like 24-7 support and all that kind of stuff, uh -huh. right? I mean, obviously that's, that's excellent, you know, great news. But I mean, if I pay $179 for that AP, right, I mean, I'm sure the 24/7 is yeah, yeah. not part of that. You will know that the 24-hour support is a that is a paid feature. That's all. we provide free support for everyone. Okay, that's by tickets, and so you and we're working on making that more responsive all the time okay. and adding SLAs to make it more. And we have a lot of people that work in like enterprise scale deployments that just use our ticketing support because it's enough for them. If they're confident in the solution and they're confident in their ability to resolve problems they can work with us through tickets. So that's still free and available, but you're, it's good to point that out. I'm glad you did, because we don't want everyone thinking that you can just call us as much as you want mm -hmm. for okay. free. Because that, that, is, that is obviously a limitation there. So thanks for that. I welcome more questions, but I got to tell you some things about software real quick. Uh, I just want to say that, uh, you know, like Craig mentioned, software is really important to us. And since we see this whole value proposition, we get to add all of these nice things onto the initial purchase. Uh, when you buy that hardware device, you get years of future software development. We don't, we don't have to charge for it, and we're doing okay. You know, I don't, I don't know why we need licensing in this industry at this level, because at the end of the day, we can make a living selling access points, switches, and routers without having to upcharge licensing fees. And so let's get rid of it. And that's what we're trying to do. And so our, our whole approach to, with Unify is about accessibility and ease, and also balancing that with how to make it uh, innovate to make uh, more advanced uh, Process is easier and, and more able to complete for those more advanced network administrators. So if you have, if you've, some of you have worked with Unify before, and I'm guessing if you haven't opened it up in six months, this is probably new to you already. And that's a testament to our tireless effort to update our software. We, we update all the time. I have a hard time keeping up with it. Uh, and that's because we're just trying to always improve that user experience. And I've been involved with those decisions and we're always trying to do, decide what kind of information would be actionable and actually help users versus you know, sometimes we've introduced analytics that actually created more noise or concern to the network performance than was actually there. And so we're always trying to balance that and make for the best user experience possible. And so you'll notice that our approach to design is, is very important. You'll, we also, I want to note that we have, we have mobile apps that are also free that allow you to basically manage all your deployments worldwide. And again, we talk about our free cloud, uh, our cloud, our cloud uh, service. That's unlimited scale. You can have 10,000 remote deployments and you can manage it through the site manager and without worrying about scale and without licensing required. So that's where we're seeing a lot of companies that are larger wanting to make the move to Unify because if it has all the capabilities they need with, that they can get with other products, if we can eventually provide everything that those products provide and there's no licensing, then why just pay the extra money for the licensing when you can cut that out? And so that's what we're trying to do with our strategy is execute on that and make it to where we offer and everything people need. Software updates and firmware <laughs> updates and stuff like that, like that, that can be like, 
if I want to stop it, like, hey, don't, don't. Yeah. I, 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 Absolutely, yeah. We give we have an option for you to schedule automatic automatic updates. You can you can turn that off. You can do it manually. You can do your own staging processes. We're trying to make it more flexible to enterprise, uh, you know, staging process. I've worked with patch management before before I came to Ubiquity years ago. And uh, I know the problem of what happens when you push out patches without testing them first, right? And so we, we want to leave that open to your processes. And so that's, again, a very strong approach with our product is all about flexibility and accommodating your workflows and how you want to use our product. So, yeah, very open-minded with that. So going to that scalability and kind of hitting on uh -huh. what Sam did, um, you've got the individual sites. Yeah. And is there going to be any sort of a hierarchical um, config tree. So I've got my stores, I've got my distribution centers, I've got my campuses for my enterprise. Each of them has their own config, but overall, I always want to have the corporate SSID. Is will there be that configuration tree? Yeah, there already there already is in, in form, and we're adding more to that all the time. So we just okay. recently added global account management and organizations where you can create a, a set of, uh, of site groups where you can have a customer, like let's say you installed eight different networks for a, a, a customer at eight different offices, you can have a group for the, for for all their deployments with all their own admin accounts that define the rights and access, it even goes to things like physical security, like they can swipe a card at any of the facilities without having to go into each account and setting up that account. So we're adding more to that all the time. I'll show you more about that in just a minute, but if I if we get through it, but uh, I just wanna show you, we have the same approach with Unify, you know, the same approach towards ease of use, accessibility, aesthetics is present in all of our product lines. And you can manage all of our products to the same interface, that, that one uh, pane of glass, you can switch between uh, video security to VoIP solution to network, all uh, hosted on one device, and all switched to the same software interface just by clicking at the top there. And just from the top left you see there, I can select all my sites that I want to and, and type in a site and it'll automatically switch me over to another site. If I wanna go to Seattle, there I am. Uh, and so we try to really integrate the whole management experience for those large scale uh, ser uh, managed service providers and make it a better experience. And so we've been working very hard on that with our site manager platform. I've got a question from Social. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, does an enterprise play mean that we'll see streaming telemetry, APIs, integration with external management systems yes. and the like? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Easy answer. Yep, we're working on it. Yep, nope. It's coming, <laughs> I'd say this year. We're gonna have some, we'll have a lot of that there. Thank you. All right, no problem. So yeah, this is uh, some other features and tools that I just wanna emphasize. We offer all these different tools that can offer benefit with the deployment process, again, for free. You can design your deployment, and this is really cool, we've geared this towards professionals now to where you can create a project if you're a managed service provider. You can go in and, and put the floor map of the customer site, you can plan what you wanna do, you can generate a bill of materials, you can present that to the customer and show them a simulated coverage of what that deployment's gonna look like based on how you propose the sell. We just keep adding more features here to make it easier for you to, uh, to scale up your managed service provider business as an integrator, uh, uh, as an installer, and so we just want to keep adding more features there to make it easier to do business with Unify, again, without charging money will, for this feature. Mm -hmm. Will you be adding multiple floors for buildings at some point? I, I We've heard the, the feedback building. plenty. I would expect we would. I haven't heard anything about the okay. feature myself, but I know that I, it makes sense to me. I agree with it. So I think it'll be there at some point, but I, I will uh, also recommend that. Thanks for sharing. Uh, we also have other features, we have other products and things that can help. So once you've deployed a, a, a network, you can use our Wi-Fi Man app. We have a little uh, dongle that you can use too, a little car that you can use to uh, help scan Wi-Fi and do a walk through the deployment to check for coverage and make sure everything looks good after deployment, fine tune coverage, move this AP over 10 feet over. Uh, you can do, and, and this is just a free app, it's usable, yeah. Does that data you collected validation have any way to map it back to the original design and match to see how accurate it was? Uh, I yeah, I don't I'm, I don't think we have that capability right now. I don't know, Craig. Craig can you say? Just, you call, you have a way to design mm -hmm. predictive. Then you have a way to collect data. Yeah. The the how do we holy grail? Did it actually work? So, and and so how close was it? So yeah, one of the things that we're working on is trying to tie all of this together. It, it's still a work in progress, but ultimately our vision is to be able to bring this in. Um, design center, Wi-Fi man, right? We want to collect this stuff, this data, bring it into the interface itself. We have Unify Interspace already, which is basically design center with your APs and switches and stuff that you already have. But yeah, we want to really use this for active management and being able to see some of your channelization and all of that stuff there, real world. So that's one of the initiatives and kind of where we want to 
And yeah, to head off the next question, can they do cable runs? Have you seen their rack designer? Yeah, <laughs> pretty, yeah you, can, you cool. can. Yeah, you can design those cable runs in advance too. So it's just kind of fun. But yeah, check out our tools, try them out, see what you think. We're also adding more advanced uh, uh, troubleshooting tools. Like this, this view here is a is a coverage troubleshooting tool that helps you identify where there's weak signal strength, see where you need to add more AP density. It provides recommendations uh, based on the signal strength and the the client experience of those devices. And we're just, uh, these are just more tools that you can use that just to improve your uh, ability to manage a large network. Uh, we're adding more all the time. We have a connectivity troubleshooting tool that Craig alluded to that allows you to troubleshoot and see what happens whenever clients aren't able to connect to Wi-Fi. Where did it break down? Was it on the DHCP level? Was it, was it with DNS? You can see that and get information about where it went wrong and debug that. Yep, go ahead. Hey, you're on the middle of your run, but going enterprise, your RRM, how... Does it incorporate client feedback or is it just AP to AP? Yeah, so I, it incorporates client feedback from my understanding. We're gonna add more there. We actually have a, a tool coming up, I'll show you real quick right here, which is just more detailed client analytics. So this is a client, uh, this is a client analyzer tool that's gonna to basically allow you to deep dive. So you get a call from your customer, he says, hey, the CEO is really upset because then he's in his office trying to get on his Wi-Fi. And he's, he's, he says he's having all sorts of issues. I can't figure out what's going on. You can be able to use this tool, which we'll release later uh, very soon, and uh, you'll be able to do a deep dive and see what happened, get a history for that client, see what went wrong, and do various uh, debugging and anal uh, analysis from there. So that's okay. coming. I also want to highlight... Application inspection. Or, What'd you say? On the right, is that like application inspection? Or? Yeah, this is like a, this can also give you like history of their usage of traffic. So if you're trying to identify a problematic client that's maybe looking at naughty sites on the network, there we go, we got that there for you. Uh, so whatever concern that you know network administrators get, there's a wide range of things that fall under that umbrella. Uh, but I also wanna highlight for this crowd, that you, I think you'll be happy, we're adding packet captures through the GUI as well, uh, that will allow you to, to you know, comb through the packet analysis here through the GUI, but also download the PCAP file to use in whatever third-party tool you wanna use. And these are the kinds of tools we wanna keep adding because again, we've heard from you, you said you wanted it, we're gonna add it. <laughs> and, we've, and, we've, and we should have it pretty soon. Uh, but those are just some features that we're adding on all the time. Uh, we've also got uh, a, a channel uh, a optimization tool that's coming in the future. So as you know, site surveys are an important part of deploying a network, but sometimes people don't do it very well. We have to have a contingency of what we're gonna do when that doesn't happen, how we can uh, look for problems and identify issues where channel usage isn't optimized, uh, where there's potential problems with different metrics, and we can also get a log of, uh, you know, auto optimization change this AP to this channel for these reasons, and then we'll give us a log here so you can tell what happened. Uh, so if you turn this on, then you can verify what the history is. But that's another one of those kind of tools that, uh, yeah, it has different use in different deployments, but uh, we want to try to resolve some of the issues proactively that could happen in the network. Uh, and just to final, nail this point down, this is our site manager, Craig mentioned it. You can manage unlimited sites. They can be hosted and managed however you want. And you can, and the cloud service is optional, but I just wanted to drive that point home. You don't have to pay a cent. You get unlimited scalability. And this is that site manager platform. Uh, we have- Question about that. Yep. Um, from a single customer, what is the max number of sites you, you've seen? Uh, I mean, I've, I, I know some customers that have done thousands. I've seen it done uh, like a point of sales equipment vendor. You know, I've seen them install a lot of APs across different sites and manage those themselves. So, uh, yeah, really, uh, it's not a lot of it's not a lot of resources required to do this, and so we're able to manage that and scale it up pretty easily. And we pay for the you know the services on our end, but uh, we still are able to do that. And I think it's an important value proposition. So, uh, just one thing to flag. Well, I, I just want to say, I'll just show you, this is kind of how easy it is to set up SD-WAN. This is one of the ways we've innovated, it's called Site Magic. You can go open up your a Site Manager, click between multiple sites, set up a VPN in just a few clicks. Ooh, boom, there we go. We've got a, we've got a uh, VPN set up that quickly uh, across those sites. And that's one of those ways we're trying to make things easier too. Because yeah, you know how to do it, but why spend a lot of time on it when you can do it in 30 seconds? Yeah. So, and last, we got some reports coming. But that's the end of my time. Thank you, everybody. And... Uh, yeah, it's been a blast. Thanks a lot.